hour test, you need to do quick, do everything quickly. Okay, so not much time to think or to try, you know. That's why do more past paper. You have experience by practicing past paper. Then when you sit for exam, you can answer quickly because you have done a lot. Okay, so instructions, answer all questions. Use a black or dark blue pen. Can I use pencil? You may use an HP pencils for any diagrams or graph. So pencil is for diagram or graph. Huh? Okay, so words or, or sentence you have to write in pen. Write your name, center, name, number, candidate number in the boxes at the top. Okay, so write your answers to each question in the space provided. Do not use an erasable pen or correction free. Do not write on any barcode. So if there is barcode, don't write over there. You may use a calculator. You should show all your working and use appropriate units. 40 marks. Okay. So let's see. The apparatus shown was used to determine the percentage to ox percentage of oxygen in a sample of air. You know, in general, air contains 21% of oxygen, but this is a sample. So what percentage? Don't know yet. Okay, now let's see you have a syringe over here, and then you have syringe over here. This syringe seems like the piston has been dragged backwards a bit with certain air here. So this part, no, no air. Copper pieces in, in between glass tubes to connect with the two syringe and the glass tube was heated strongly glass tube at x so heat strongly at x while the sample of air was passed backwards and forward over the copper pieces in the tube so how to pass backward and forward so the prediction will be you press the piston, then here you pull away. Then the gas will go to the left. Then after that, you push the piston inside. And then here you drag out. Then the gas will go to the right. So it is expected to do something like that. The source of heat was gradually moved along the tube from X to Y. So you heat at this point. Then you slowly move to Y. During the experiment, the copper pieces in the glass tube react with oxygen in the sample of air. Okay, so you should expect something like this. Huh? Initially, you have more volume. So after that, the air passed through the copper pieces the copper react with oxygen to form copper two oxide and then the a the volume of air decreases you can measure it when you push the piston in and here you can see the volume of gas which should be lesser you know because certain oxygen has been used up here okay. now name the items or apparatus labeled so, so I have a question. Uh, so if the piston in the piston B is like pulled, uh, so I still like uh, don't understand how the air is actually transferred. Imagine you push here. Yeah. You push here, then the air will go to this side. And then uh, the air will fill up this space and they will push the piston backwards naturally. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. So, understand, sir. So, uh, so basically, I have to pull B. Okay. Push B. I have to push, push B. Push B and then the, the air will come here. The air will just push A naturally. Yes. When they reach here, then you push the piston A after taking the measurement. Uh, after taking the measurement, you push A, then the A will come here again. Okay, sir. 
the name, the items, apparatus, they could be. So this is strange or guess strange. Okay, so find the answer. This is I can see piston right here. Uh, piston is this part only. Uh, they don't accept piston. Uh. Uh, one the whole thing. Strange. So guess strange. Name the items of laboratory equipment that could be used to heat the glass tube strongly. They want to heat over here, so you can use Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner. Okay, so part C. The copper pieces at Y. Yeah did not change color when they were heated. Not change color. You know when copper changed to copper 2 oxide, yeah? so the copper is initially brown color, copper 2 oxide is supposed to be black color, yeah? so they're supposed to change color. Okay, so, uh, so that's why the copper pieces and why did not change color. Okay. So it did not change color. That means uh, not heated. Not heated. Uh, you see, when they were heated, when they were heated, you know, you heat over here first, then you slowly move the Bunsen burner to this side. Uh. But it is not changed to black color, uh, meaning that more oxygen ready, uh, The oxygen ready react with this part. With the copper pieces at this side. So if they don't change color, that means oxygen is all reacted with the copper pieces on this side. Okay, so you can see it in this way. All oxygen use up so copper does not react. So when you look at uh, the, the first three parts that we have gone through, uh, you will realize we need to use common sense, critical thinking. The notes that we have gone through before this doesn't really have much contribution, you know. So uh, of course, they just let you have some understanding that uh, copper can react with oxygen to form copper dioxide. Yeah? Uh, then you have some basic help. And when you answer exam questions, the notes not really useful anymore. Critical thinking is the main thing. Okay, now we look at the D part one. The table shows the volumes of air in each part of the apparatus at the start of the experiment. So you can see um, part apparatus A, no A, no A, uh, as you can see, right? So the piston is fully pushed until the end. So no A over here. And then the glass tube itself, the glass tube is XCM tube, the strange B, 94 cm tube. Of course, you can read the reading here to get 94 cm tube. Uh. So 8 cm cube, 94 cm cube. So all together, the total volumes of A uh, is this plus this, 102. Okay. So calculate the total volumes of A in the apparatus at the start of the experiment. A D1 is just adding 94 uh, cm cube and together with 8 cm cube. Uh, and also... Zero C cube. Zero C and cube, yeah. So no guess, no A on strange A. So we have one zero two C M cube. The table shows the volume of gas in each part of the apparatus at the end of the experiment. So what happened is you you know you push the 
the piston to move the gas to the left. Then after that, you push the piston on the syringe air to move the gas to the right. And you repeat for a few times until at the end, you get this reading. Okay, you get this reading. Huh? So calculate the percentage of oxygen in the sample of air. Okay. So uh, first of all, let's understand the the values here, uh, 75 plus 8, right? 75 plus 8, which is 83 cm cube, right? Is the uh, volume of air without oxygen. Because oxygen has been used up uh, to react with the copper. So this 102 cm cube is volume of air with oxygen. With oxygen, huh? okay. So how to count percentage of oxygen? Uh, logically, it should be volume of oxygen over original volume original volume times original volume of A times 100%. Okay, so volume of oxygen, this minus this. 102 minus 83. Original volume, 102 times 100%. Should be around 20%. Uh, so let's count and see. Yeah. So we get 18.6%. 18.6%. So if you are wondering how many significant should you put three significant figures. So 18.6102 three significant figures. Huh? So you put here 18.6. Remember to put the units percent. Okay, so we have done this part. Now let's see the next questions. That is the first question. Huh? Okay, now the second one. A student investigated the reaction between aqueous sodium hydroxide and two different solutions of dilute hydrochloric acid with different concentration. That means sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid uh, react through neutralizations. So labeled Q and R using two different syndicators. So Q is hydrochloric acid with the first concentration. R is hydrochloric acid with another concentration. So three experiments were done. Experiment one, a burette was filled with hydrochloric acid Q. A burette, something like this. This is a burette. You fill up with HCl Q. Now what concentration? Don't know. Some of the dilute hydrochloric acid was run out of the burette so that the level of the dilute hydrochloric acid was on the burex scale. So you have to make the level stay in a, a scale, a particular scale, so that you can record down the initial reading. You know. So using a measuring cylinder, 25 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide was poured into a conical flask. So you put a conical flask here. Okay, then you put 25 cm cube of NaOH. Okay. Five drops of methyl orange indicator were added to the conical flask. Methyl orange. Okay, so let's do a quick revision on methyl orange. Yeah. Okay, so let's see from the internet. Yeah, 
in acidic pH until orange should be red to orange depends on depends on pH in neutral until orange should be yellow in alkaline until orange is also yellow so yellow yellow red orange so okay let's go back to the questions So we should expect this is going to be yellow at the beginning. Huh? Okay. Now the conical flask was placed on a white towel. So you put a white towel below of it. So of course the reason is to see the color clearly. Huh? Then dilute hydrochloric acid was added slowly from the burex to the conical flask. So you just open up this part then it drops then you see how it drops inside yeah? and then while the flask was swirl okay, you have to swirl it or you have to uh, stir it until the solution just change color just change color that means you should expect that change color to uh, red or orange when it just change color you stop Use the Burex diagram to complete the table for experiment one. Initial reading. Um, initial reading is three. I'll start from here. Two, two point five, two point six, two point seven, two point seven. Huh? Okay. So two point seven, two point seven. Then the penalties are. 20.3 okay correct 2.7 and 20.3 volume of dilute hydrochloric acid so you have to minus so 20.3 minus 2.7 so you will get 17.6 17.6 Move on. The conical flask was emptied and rinsed with distilled water. The burette was rinsed with distilled water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid R. Experiment 1 was repeated using dilute hydrochloric acid R in states of dilute hydrochloric acid Q. Okay, now you have the reading. They do the same thing but with different hydrochloric acid. So initial reading here, 8 point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 point, 5, 8 point, 5. Okay, final reading, 43 point, 7, 43 point, 7. Huh? Okay, so 43.7. Okay, so then we minus, we minus together as it added. So we minus, we get the five point two. Now, experiment three, the conical flask was emptied and rinsed with distilled water. Experiment two was repeated using thymorphthalein indicator in states of methyl orange indicator. Okay, so let's take a quick look on the color of time of telling. Okay, so Sir, yeah. Can I know why did they do the test three times? Uh if you know later actually yeah they will slowly guide you to it. So time of telling. Uh, even if you ask me, I haven't read through the whole question, so I don't know yet. But uh, logically, it should be used to find the concentrations of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so as you can see, they show the color here. 
Um, blue, purple, and, and neutral is seems to be colorless. I know Stalin. Okay, so this chart, this chart should should help. In basic medium, blue. In acidic medium, colorless. Blue and colorless. Okay, and neutral is also colorless. Huh? So blue, colorless. Okay, so let's come back to the questions. Okay. Now, use the burette diagram to complete the experiment, the table for experiment three. So we have uh, seven. Reading is seven. And then okay. the final is uh, 42.2. 42.2. Okay, so you see, we have to put one decimal places, huh? that we minus 35.2. 35.2. Okay, now, so you're wondering why we had to do the experiment three times, right? So let's see the questions, then from there you will know why. Determine the simplest whole number ratio of the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid R used in experiment two and experiment three. You know, experiment two, hydrochloric acid R, the D5.2, which is, which is this one, the D5.2, huh? uh, this one, the D5.2 also, a okay, one ratio. So we can't keep our ratio in this complicated number, right? We simplify the ratio to one to one. Deduce the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid Q needed when experiment one is repeated using Thymorphthalene indicator in states of Matthew orange indicator. Okay, so how to deduce? Huh? So you have to base on the ratio here. This one is experiment two. You use Matthew orange. This one is Thymorphthalene. Uh, indicator, same volume, same volume, huh? so same volume. So because of that, if experiment one, where we are using until orange as indicator, required 17.6 cmq of hydrochloric acid cube, then when you change the indicator to time of Darwin, so we should expect the same volume, 17.6 or so. 17.6 cmq. Why two marks? This number one mark. Unit one mark. Actually, so why we have to put 17.6 again? Sorry, why you ask again? Uh, why we have to put 17.6 same as the experiment one? Uh, because from B we are able to predict that. You try to see what is meant by B, yeah? one to one ratio here. One to one ratio here is HCLR in Matthew orange. Then HCLR in time of so you will realize the volumes of HCL are in the two different indicator. There's no difference. Then experiment one is HCLQ in Matthew Orange, which is 17.6. Now they are asking HCLQ in Thymorphthalene. So because of that, based on our previous result, we show the same volume. And now they said deduce, right? Deduce means look at the previous result to predict. 
So since the the ratio is one to one, which means same volume, huh? then when hydrochloric acid Q is used, so should be the same volume also. Although you change the indicator, but uh, the previous results show that it is the same, so this should be the same also. So that's why 17.6. Okay. We look at D. Compare the concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid Q used in experiment 1 to the concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid R used in experiment 2. Explain your answer. You see, hydrochloric acid Q seems to be less in volume. Huh? Or less by half compared to this. This is double of this. Huh? So meaning that HClq uh, should be concentrated, double the concentration of R. Okay, so Q is more concentrated than R. Okay, reason S smaller volume of Q is required. Okay, two marks on here. Uh, you get the third mark. So what you can say is, you can say Q has twice the concentration of R. So you compare it by specified the concentration to be twice and then you get the third mark. You compare it in general, you get one mark. You specify it, one more. So it's kind of easy to get marks, you know. Now we look at the state how the result change if at all if the aqueous sodium hydroxide is warm before adding the dilute hydrochloric acid. Give a reason for your answer. You you heat up hydrochloric acid. So do you think we need more hydrochloric acid or less hydrochloric acid? Okay, so we have to answer the effect on, on result. Should be the same, you know. You heat it up, they just react quickly. Okay, so you increase the rate of reaction. The thing is, we are talking about the amount of hydrochloric acid added to it. The amount of sodium hydroxide is not changed, so the amount of hydrochloric acids to be added should be the same. Okay, so not reasons uh, does not change the concentration Of sodium hydroxide. Um, so I still don't understand uh, E. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I repeat the important statement again. Uh. Okay. You are heating up. You just warm the hydro the sodium hydroxide. You are not changing the concentration of the mole of NaOH. So since you are not changing the concentration, you are not changing the mole of NaOH, we should expect the same volume of 
HCl to be added should be the same volume. Okay, so you warm the NaOH, right? You don't change the concentration, you don't change the mole, then we should expect the same volume of HCl is required to neutralize it. Okay, so that's why the, the effect on result we say none. You still need the same volume. Okay, no change. Of course, if you add water, then uh, concentration is, is different, but the mole is still the same, so still no change also. Okay, so it depends on the mole basically. Yeah. Now, F, state the advantage of using a pipette instead of the measuring cylinder in these experiments. Okay, so pipette, of course, more accurate compared to measuring cylinder. So more accurate. Explain why a white towel is used in this experiment. So the change of the indicators. Other change of the indicator can be seen easily. So color change can be seen easily. Okay, now part H. At the start of experiment two, the burette was rinsed with distilled water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid R. So you had to explain I know. State what was removed from the burette when it was rinsed with distilled water. So you remove the previous acid or acid cube. Okay. Then state what was removed from the burette when it was rinsed with dilute hydrochloric acid R. So now you are removing the water. The distilled water just now. Explain why the burette does not need to be rinsed at the start of experiment three. Experiment three use the same acid as experiment two, uh, so that's why I don't need to rinse. Uh. So same acid use. Okay. So then, after the burette was filled with dilute hydrochloric acid at the start of experiment one, some of the acid was run out of the burette. One reason for running the acid out of the burette is to make sure the level of the hydrochloric acid is on the scale. Give one other reason why it is important to run some acid out of the burette after it has been filled for the first time in an experiment. So I will give another reason. Okay, so um, the reason is to, you know the burette, right? They may have some empty space here, you know, some empty space here, or maybe a bubbles there. So we want to fill up, fill up the burettes below the tap. So we have to fill, fill up part of burette below. So that's why we have to run for the first time. Okay, just to fill up the, the, the space, huh, which is filled up with A at the beginning. And after that? So the one is fill up part of the buried below tap. Yeah. So yeah. Tap is the one, the, the, the knob of the buried itself. Sorry, what I say again? is basically the knob of the murid of the burette itself yeah this is the tap okay. 
yeah, to fill up uh, acids over here as well as here. If in case there are a bubble here, just fill up with acids. So for paper six, there are like four questions only. Yeah, uh, imagine four questions in one hour. Huh? So have to be good. Huh? So that's the thing. Now let's see question three. Solid S and solution Y were analyzed. Solid S was anhydrous copper two sulfate. Tests were done on each substance. Tests on solid S. Complete the expected observation. A flame test was carried out on solid S. Observation. Flame test. So we have to write down the color of the flame okay color of the flame for copper to sulfate uh, is blue so this is under the chapter metals yeah. you know all kind of chemical tests under the chapters blue green flame okay so have to memorize it the remaining solid S was dissolved in about 10 cm cube of distilled water to form solution T. Solution T is copper to sulfate solution. Eh? Solution T was divided into two approximately equal portions in two test tubes. State the color change that occurred when water was added to solid S to form solution T. So from solid S, this should be white color, white solid. Uh. Copper to sulfate, when there is no water, uh, it is white solid. And hydrous means no water. The copper to sulfate that you used to CD in blue color is the hydrated, hydrated copper to sulfate, which is the crystal form. Uh, so that is hydrated. Uh, so since this is anhydrous, so we have to write white, white solid to solution T. When you add water to it, it becomes blue, blue solution. Part C. To the first portions of solution T, about 1 cm depth of dilute nitric acid, followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate were added. So imagine you have CuSO4. Then you add barium and it becomes barium SO4, which is the white precipitate. So because of that, the answer is white precipitate. Because of the barium sulfate. To the second portion of solution T, aqueous ammonia was added dropwise and then in excess observations okay so you should expect uh, the blue precipitate blue precipitate is formed when you add for the few drops then the blue precipitate dissolve when you add in excess okay so light blue Precipitate dissolve to form a deeper blue solution. Okay, how to get three marks? Light blue precipitate, one mark. Dissolve to form a dissolve to form a solution. One mark. Deeper blue 
solution the third mark so get three marks in that way uh. so memorize the color uh. then Test on solution Y. Okay, so let's see. Yeah. Test one. We don't know what solution Y, by the way. Yeah. A flame test was carried out on solution Y. The flame became lilac. The flame becomes lilac. Hang out. Or they assume. Okay, now next row. Solution Y was divided into three approximately equal portions in one boiling tube and two test tubes. Dilute hydrochloric acid was added to the portions of solution Y in the boiling tube. The mixture was warm. Streets of filter paper soaked in acidified aqueous potassium magnet 7 was held at the mouth of the boiling tube. The acidified aqueous potassium magnet 7 yeah. remained purple. Okay, so that means. Uh, it is not oxidizing anything. So it's not oxidizing anything. So for these situations, uh, let's move on first. We can't decide anything yet. About 1 cm depth of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous sewer nitrate were added to the second portions of solution Y. Yellow precipitate. So you know, sewer nitrate is used here. Yeah? Yellow precipitate. Huh? So you think of sewer chloride to be white, sewer bromide to be cream color, Silver iodide to be yellow. Okay, so this should be silver iodide. So that means solution Y has iodide. So Y has iodide. Aqueous ammonia was added dropwise and then in excess to the third portions of solution Y. A white precipitate form which dissolved in excess to give a colorless solution. So when you have this observation, so you should think of a particular cation. Huh? So if you can remember, let's take a quick look. So they said dissolve. Huh? We look at this column. Uh, this one. White precipitate soluble in excess, giving a colorless solution. Okay, so let's come back to the questions. White precipitate dissolve in excess. So you should think of zinc. Zinc 2 plus. Zinc 2 plus. Huh? Okay. Now, name the gas tested for in test 2. In test 2, uh, this one. Okay. So, why we want to use potassium magnet 7? Although there is no outcome here, so they just want to ask to, to test uh, whether you know this or not. So, actually, this potassium magnet 7. Uh, is to test the presence of sulfur dioxide. If sulfur dioxide is present, it is going to be oxidized to sulfur trioxide. So we test with this, huh? sulfur dioxide. 
but that means there is no sulfur dioxide gas coming out like, after doing all this. Okay, no sulfur dioxide coming out. Like. Identify the three ions in solution Y. So, potassium ion. Iodide ion, zinc ion. Okay, so of course we already discussed this. Huh? So that's why I write the answer straight away. Huh? As you can see in the table. Okay, so we have done these questions. When solution A and solution B are mixed, they react slowly to form. I or D. Okay, so react slowly to form I or D. Starch solution is added to the mixtures to act as an indicator. When a certain amount of iodine is made, there is a sudden color change to blue. Plan an investigation to find the effect of temperature on the rates of reactions between solution A and solution B. You are provided with solution A, solution B, starch solution, and common laboratory apparatus. Okay, so um, we have to know that when iodine mixed with starch, it will turn blue black. Okay, it will turn blue black. Huh? So solution A, solution B, when you mix together, they form iodine. They form iodine. Huh? So let's say I give you one example. Uh, let's say if you put chlorine to potassium iodide, displacement happen. Chlorine displaces the iodide, so then they will form KCl plus iodine. So example only, just to let you see some example that may make you understand this reaction. Huh? So when iodine is formed, then you, you, you add starch solution to it. Huh? So the starch solution react with the iodine, then the color change to blue-black. Plan an experiment to find the effect of temperature on the rate of reactions between solution A and solution B. Okay, so you just plan the whole experiment. Huh? You see the marks given here, six marks. Okay, so six marks. Uh, let's see what point is required. Okay, uh, we set up some volumes of solution A and solution B. Okay, so let's say I set uh, 50. Uh, 50 cm cube of solution. A and 50 cm cube of solution B are prepared. Okay. One point, no? This one, one point. What are the conditions to get one point here? You must have known volume. Known volume. Huh? Okay. So you cannot say like uh, a certain volume of solution A and a certain volume of solution B are prepared. They don't give you much. You must set some value. Okay. So second month. Uh, Let's, let's say I just continue from here. I prepared, uh, I use blue color uh, to show the second one. 
how you want to measure the 50 cm cube one. So one of the way is measuring cylinder. Okay. So by using measuring cylinder. Second mark. So the conditions to get the second mark here is a suitable apparatus. A suitable apparatus. You don't do like 50 cm cube one, and you go and use uh, pipette. Uh, so it's a bit hard. As you can see, you see pipette. Uh, Unless you have this pipette, uh, 50 cm cube is possible. You know, normally in the laboratory, the pipette is used to measure very small volume. Uh, so that's the thing. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so the third point. The initial temperature of solutions A and solution B are measured by using thermometer okay. so uh, condition to get the third mark is measure temperature measure temperature you know you want to check the effect of temperature right? so must measure the temperature okay then after that Mix the solution together. Mix the solutions together and starch is starch solution is added. So you get one mark. Okay. So the keyword, the condition to get the, the, the marks here is you have to mix the solution. Mix them up. Okay. Then you have to uh, you have to check the time, uh, how long it takes for the blue blacks to come out. You know? So time for the blue black color to be seen is taken so one mark okay so uh, conditions to get marks here is time you must mention uh, you measure the time you know rate how fast the reaction happens use time to, to indicate that then you have to uh, repeat the experiment at a different temperature. Okay, so this time you get one mark. Condition is repeat and temperature. So when you say that, you get the marks. 
Okay, let's say I continue. Bye. Warm up, warming up the solutions before they are mixed. Yeah, one moment. Before is very important here. Okay, so uh, you see how many ticks we have uh, so far. Finish ready line actually at yeah, this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven points. So any six of these points, as long as it is there, then you get six marks. Certain points is a bit hard, like the last point, a bit hard to think of. Okay, so if you can write it, you get one mark. If you are not able to write it, you don't get marks. So my suggestions, write, write more, write more than enough. Okay. So you don't do like, okay, six points, uh, six marks, I write six points. So maybe you write eight points. Or you write until time's up. Right? So limited time, right? one hour or something. So you write until time's up. Uh, you see how many points you can write, just write it down. So uh, finish ready this whole paper. As you can see, no more and done.